I feel like this is like a little umbrella, you know? Honestly, this thing is not that heavy. <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. Since my first Starlink video, more satellites have been launched and more and more people are talking about Starlink. So I wanted to make this second video to give you an update on some things that I learned since the first video. I'm sure that you noticed in the first video, I took my Starlink 29 miles away from the service address here and tried to test it out there because I wanted an unobstructed view of the sky. Well, my good friends on the internet made me aware that when you get your public beta test unit it's not really meant for being portable quite yet and really it's assigned to a single cell so you're not supposed to take it that far away from home Don't! according to the frequently asked question section on starlink's website starlink satellites are scheduled to send internet down to all users within a designated area on the ground this designated area is referred to as a cell so your starlink unit is assigned to a single cell. If you move your Starlink outside of its assigned cell, a satellite will not be scheduled to serve your Starlink and you will not receive any internet. This is constrained by geometry and is not arbitrary geofencing. With this in mind, Starlink is amazing. Even though it's called better than nothing beta, it's incredible. I mean, think about it. I didn't have any service on my cell phone and we had service on that Starlink almost 30 miles away from the service address. I was able to download a file from my Google Drive. I was able to upload a video to YouTube. We almost were able to game and we were able to stream in 4K. So right now, SpaceX has more than a thousand Starlink satellites in orbit, but that number is quickly growing. Every launch has about 60 satellites. There's even one scheduled for March and many more to come. And the goal is to eventually have 42,000 satellites, a constellation of satellites to provide internet access all around the world. So last year, there were a record 31 launches for the year and 2021 is expected to be busier. The 45th Space Wing is preparing for at least 40 missions. Something else that's really cool, SpaceX plans to expand this technology beyond Earth, maybe someday even on Mars. But let's come back down to Earth for a moment. Here's some great examples of how Starlink is already changing lives. The first location in Canada to receive SpaceX Starlink internet service was Pekanjikum, a remote 3,000 person indigenous community. This is in Northwestern Ontario. So before these residents of this indigenous community had access to Starlink, they were only getting three megabits per second. With Starlink, they're receiving around 130 mind blown. I mean, that is, that is huge. And now the community can access education, healthcare, uh, contact friends and relatives from outside of that area. And you know, here's another really cool example of how Starlink is just changing the world and making things safer. And this was really the first time that I had Starlink on my radar. Last September in Washington, where I am located, there was a wildfire that absolutely devastated, destroyed this tiny town called Malden. And as the town continues to rebuild after being devastated, I wanted to point out this example because while firefighters and first responders were there, according to a tweet from Washington Emergency Management, SpaceX Starlink internet service was being used in that area far following that disaster. So basically because of Starlink, emergency responders had access to internet that they would have otherwise not had. Elon Musk even tweeted about this. We are prioritizing emergency responders in locations with no internet connectivity at all. This is more than just no data caps and, and having more internet access in these rural areas. This is something that could really change the world and make it a better, safer place. So 
I love it. And a lot of people commented on my first video about Starlink, just telling me how much they absolutely love it so far. And it's not a surprise. I mean, first off, we cannot overlook the fact that there are no data caps. Most users in rural areas with their current satellite internet are only able to get a few megabits per second, and Starlink is definitely already outperforming that big time. I wanted to go over their plan again. It's called the Better Than Nothing Beta, but it really is better than a lot of what's currently out there. And it's still in its beta testing. It's still in its rollout phase. We all know that it's only going to get better. I know so many people across the country are chomping at the bit, wanting to get this in their area, and that is coming soon. But the Better Than Nothing Beta has estimated speeds of 50 to 150 megabits per second, estimated latency 20 to 40 milliseconds and some interruptions in connectivity are to be expected but it's $499 for the phased array antenna and the router and then it's a $99 per month subscription but I mean, everyone in the comments is like, this is well worth the money. Of course, you know, I don't live in a rural area, but for those that do and have already been using this service, they're in love and I can't blame them. I mean, this is incredible. The other thing that's really nice about Starlink is it is so easy to set up. It's really quite simple point and shoot. So let's show you that really quickly. And so these already come plugged in. This is the router here and this is the PoE unit. And as you can see, there is another auxiliary ethernet connection here if you wanna use that. There's also a reset button on the bottom. I feel like this is an episode of Cribs. Come on, come follow me. This is my backyard. Obviously we had some recent snow and one really cool thing about the Starlink is that it can heat itself up so it does great in all of the elements in the rain and the snow. So this is the third speed test that we've done and we're gonna do 10 of these. So let's do it again. And then we're gonna take the average for science. I mean, pretty unobstructed view. The fastest one that I saw so far was 51. Nick got 54. So, we'll just keep running these. So one thing that I wanted to note on the app here, you can see that there's beta downtime of one minute, which is not a lot. And you know, in Starlink's frequently asked questions section, it says that there is to be expected periods of no connectivity at all, and that will improve over time as they launch more satellites. So really not bad. Just to give you a look at some of the data here on the app. And as always, if you liked this video, be sure to give it a like. Please subscribe to me and I will have more updates on this awesome technology, Starlink, in the future. Thank you for watching.